I live in a community um, of five families, and my son is the eighth kid, the, eighth, the youngest kid in, out of eight. Um, the oldest kid now is graduating from high school. And so I had read a lot of children's books to a lot of kids over, over the years. Um, and while I really enjoyed some of them, some of them I didn't enjoy so much <laughs> reading them over and over and over again. And you know, my family, we're all activists, we're all organizers. Um, do social change work, and it was, I was like, well, why don't we have a children's book for activists? <laughs> um, so that's how it all started. I basically wanted to write a book for my kid that represented my values, um, and, you know, when the idea of K A is for activists came out, and so I sat down with everybody from my office here at Design Action, and we said, well, what are the letter words you would put for each letter? If it's A is for activist, B is for banner, C is for co-op, <laughs> you know, all the things that, uh, that we associate with activism. And so that's how it all started. <laughs> My name is Inosanto Nagara. I live in Oakland, California now. I'm originally from Jakarta, Indonesia, and um, I'm a graphic designer and a children's book author. I work for Design Action Collective that does graphic design for social change, and um, I have four children's books about activism. So Design Action um, is a spin-off of Inkworks Press. I was the Inkworks Press started at a time when the idea was um, freedom of the press belongs to those who own one. And so it was important at the time that you own a, that owning a printing press is something that the movement had. Um, over the years it became more and more clear that um, it was less about owning the presses as much as being able to control the story. Um, we felt like we were doing something very useful with the design piece of it. People weren't just coming to us with things to print, but it also they were coming because they needed us to uh, help them tell the story visu through visual communications. So we started doing various projects for organizations like Project Underground, you know, who were really um, clever about using that imagery and using the tools of graphic design, well-designed materials in order to get attention to the issues. Well, I grew up in a, something of an activist family. Um, my mother is from the United States. She was um, involved in the civil rights movement. She was first arrested at the Sheraton Hotel sit-in in 1964, and then she was arrested again in the anti-Vietnam movement in 1968. Um, and then my father is a, a dissident poet playwright in Indonesia in the 70s. Again, you know, he did a bunch of um, plays against the Suharto regime where he, so I grew up around a lot of very creative people who were also very critical of, of the government. I myself then came to the United States to come to college and got involved with some environmental stuff in college. Um, at UC Davis at the time there was uh, uh, a lot of activism. I met my wife <laughs> at that time. We, were, uh, we did a 24-hour uh, vigil on campus that lasted throughout the whole war, so I slept on campus. I, started doing graphic design um, on the side because that's what came easy to me. <laughs> I needed to do that to make money to pay for college, but I also then um, found myself doing the newsletter for the, um, you know, the activist group that we were part of. First it was People for Peace and Third World Forum was a newspaper that we had on campus at the time and then ended up doing photography and, um, and graphic design for, for those organizations. I sort of, by doing graphic design, I was lucky because I didn't have to just pick one issue that I, I cared about that I put everything into. I was able to work on, you know, lots of things. You know, I got involved in, you know, everything that was happening <laughs> at the time. You know, we, you know I, I always call myself sort of an activist designer. 
Yeah, my newest book that comes out in the fall is called The Wedding Portrait, and it's built around a photograph that a photographer took of um, myself, my wife, and our wedding party when we got married. Um, I took we had the whole wedding party went to Livermore Labs and um, for a direct action, uh, civil disobedience action, and we all got arrested. <laughs> and the photo is of of us. Um, in our wedding garb with our whole wedding party kneeling down in front of a row of hired police <laughs> um, who were uh, about to arrest us. So the story in the book is built around the photograph, the wedding portrait from, from the action that I did after my wedding, but really, just like my night in the planetarium, it's actually about a lot more than that. It's really about a history of civil disobedience, direct action, and why, you know, why subtitle it, why sometimes we have to break the rules. Because, you know, with kids, you're always trying to say you have to follow the rules, <laughs> you know, but, uh, there, but then at the same time, we're trying to say, well, sometimes, you know, when something is really bad and breaking the rules is better than not breaking the rules, you have to break the rules.